Hello YouTube. In this video, we're going to consider the dark side of pencils. When it comes to drawing photorealistically or hyper-realism type of uh, drawings using um, pencils, you know, and mostly graphite pencils or charcoal pencils, such as this drawing that I did here of the girl in the wall or this drawing that I did over here of the desert man. If you want to get realism in your drawings, in your pencil drawings, you're going to need to bring out the contrast between the whites and the darks of that drawing. Now, here's a drawing that I did of Uma Thurman, an actress, well-known actress, and you can see that it is light in that it doesn't have really dark darks um, and so the contrast is extremely low so it, it's clear that it's it's a pencil drawing and uh, it's one of my earliest ones that I did and and here you know I, I had yet to learn the concept of contrast and just to kind of get it bumped to where it was a little more realistic I had to learn to use darker pencils so that the blacks are really really black and the white of course is the the medium the paper that I'm using and so to get all the tones that you need in a photorealistic drawing you're gonna need to go from light mid-tones and then into very dark areas and you're gonna need some really dark pencils now these are the ones that I happen to have uh, in my possession and so these are the ones that I'm going to talk about uh, in this video. Now as I bring this close up to the camera I want you to see something here and hopefully it will be uh, reflected into the uh, camera lens and actually that was a pun there when I said reflected because that's one of the things that you need to learn about dark pencils is reflection or what they call graphite sheen. Now if you look at these dark pencils and I'll, I'll tell you what they, each of them are in a moment here but first I want you to look at the, the tips of these. Notice the ones that seem to have this real shine coming off of them. Can you, can you see? There's two pencils here specifically that has a glare from my lamp and that would be if you guessed right it would be this one here as you can see it has that really shiny uh, graphite shine to it there and if you want to compare it to another pencil take a look at that one where you see there's no shine whatsoever and the other one would be this one right here where you also see a shine why do these two pencils shine it's because it's soft graphite or graphite in general which is very reflective especially when you draw on paper you will see a glare when you look at it from an angle to light that is striking its surface and that is different than these pencils here for example which are in fact not graphite with the exception of this pencil right here which is part graphite and part carbon which helps it not have that graphite shine so let me introduce all these pencils to you now this one here is in a pencil holder because I've pretty much used it down to a stub and I don't really want to waste a pencil but this is a Prismacolor 
drawing pencil and it's a 9B. So it, it's considered a dark graphite pencil. Hopefully that shows right there. Let me put that back in its holder here. The other graphite pencil that has this sheen to it is also a Prismacolor and it's called the Ebony. And many consider it a dark graphite pencil. Now this one here is part graphite and it has carbon in it and it's the Kimberly General Pencil Company's Kimberly 9XXB. It's a unique pencil because it has that that combination but you will also find that in the um, Stadler Mars Lumograph 100 drawing pencils uh, I believe that's from the 7B on up they also have uh, a carbon graphite mixture which is unique among drawing pencil sets which normally do not have a hybrid such as this 9XXB or the um, Stadler Lumograph from 7B on up. This pencil here is a common soft charcoal pencil. And this one happens to come from Castle Art Supplies. Another dark pencil for drawing is a carbon pencil, which this is the material that mixed with graphite creates this 9XXB or the Mars Lumograph uh, grade 7B on up that I had already referred to. So this is a carbon, pure carbon. There's no graphite in it whatsoever. Then you have this pencil here. Let's see if I can get the name to show up there in the camera. It's a, a Koinor Hardmuth Geoconda Negro. And then there's a part number there, 8815. And then they have a slash 2 or a slash 1 or a slash 3. Uh, I don't know what a slash 1 or slash 3, what what difference it has to a slash two and this was very very difficult to locate I found it online um, I really had a hunt for it I don't think it's for most of you you may or may not I, I don't believe you'll be able to find it if you can great one of the things I noticed about this particular pencil which is not graphite not charcoal not carbon it's some kind of I don't know, crayon -y type of material like a drawing pencil would be, uh, but it, it does seem to be a little different than a, a dark black uh, color pencil, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, but it's also in California, it is listed as um, that it can cause cancer. I don't know how, I, I guess if you eat it, um, I don't know if you inject it into your skin, but um, it has one of those California type labels to it so maybe one of the reasons why it's hard to get a hold of and I recently picked this one up here which is also a Prisma color and it's called the Colorage which means color erase uh, this one here is a 20048 which is black so I went and got a black color pencil but specifically the Colorage because it has an eraser and I want to be able to erase my you know be able to erase the the whatever I put on the paper kind of bring it out with a, an eraser which is something that we'll be looking at as well with these pencils so we're gonna look at how these pencils compare so that they can meet your needs in drawing high contrast uh, pencil drawings I'm gonna to need to get an eraser and in this case, I'm going to bring in a kneaded eraser for this uh, demonstration here, as well as just using a standard pencil eraser, such as uh, this white one here. And I'll just use it off the tip of a pencil here. Okay, so to start off with, let's take a look at the Prismacolor Ebony Pencil. And I'm going to zoom in now so we can get a little more close up as to what's going on here. Now this is a graphite pencil. There's no carbon or charcoal in it or, or any color pencil wax or any of those other type things. This is just a purely soft and hopefully dark 
um, graphite pencil, the ebony from Prismacolor. So let's go ahead and lay some graphite down. The pencil is very soft, which is expected. Now I'm not going to press down hard on it right away. I'm going to just show you light by holding it on the back end, as you see here. And I'm going to just lay down some graphite. And you can see that it's darker than a, just a standard old school pencil or HB pencil. And there you go. Now I'm going to press hard to see about getting maximum um, darkness. I'd say blackness, but not all these are actually black. They're kind of a graphite gray. So, I mean, it wouldn't be a good term. So I'm just going to say darkness. But here I'm going to go ahead and press. So you can see, and as a tip, as far as dark colors or drawing very, very dark on a pencil drawing, you want to avoid pressing down with your pencil. So although I can get really dark with this uh, ebony pencil, the cons to that, the, the problem to doing this is one, you're not going to be able to lift that off with an eraser. It's going to leave a lot left on the paper. And also, it's going to suffer a lot from the dreaded graphite glare. So take a close look at that. And then I'm going to uh, turn it into the light so you can see that for yourself, the glare. Look at that. See that shine coming off of there? Well, when you're looking at a contrasty drawing, and you have this glare coming off, it no longer has the effect of realism. It just looks like a horrible aluminum type of uh, drawing thing. It just, it's terrible. And that's one of the dreaded things about using graphite, dark graphite, especially if you press down on it, you'll notice that on the right, that uh, this here is got more glare than that there. And that's because, of course, I pressed down on it and uh, it flattens the graphite and causes the light to shine off of it, you know, like a regular reflective uh, type surface. Okay, so that's your ebony. I'm going to go ahead and, and write ebony on top so we don't forget which is which. It's a very soft, soft pencil, and that's to be expected for a dark pencil. Now, the next one that we're going to look at is the other graphite pencil, which happens to be uh, just their standard drawing pencil and it's grade 9B, the Prismacolor 9B pencil. So again, holding it at the back end here so that letting the pencil do the work, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, lay down some graphite. So you can see how dark it is when you're putting it on light enough that an eraser can take it off, which is what you want to do. So let's see how dark we can get without putting pressure on here so we don't lose the ability to erase, which we'll test that out later on in this video. Okay, well there's, there's applied with just the pencil weight pretty much, and now I'm going to give it the, the pressure. And the thing about graphite pencils is Many grades of pencils, even lighter grades than a 9B, if you press hard on the paper, you're going to be able to achieve a somewhat dark look. But the reason you have the different grades is because you really don't want to be pressing in the paper. Again, because that's a bad idea. Now this here is the, the 9B from Prismacolor. I'm just going to write PC up there. And we'll take a close look at that as well. Now you can see it's actually lighter than the ebony, in both cases even pressing down. The ebony is a much darker pencil than its uh, 9B sibling. And there's your glare. See that glare? Because it's graphite. Undesirable effect. Now there's ways to minimize glare, um, like spraying it, you know, with with one of those fixatives or uh, putting it under glass in a frame will minimize it somewhat. But if you can avoid the glare, 
that is definitely the way you want to go. Now we're going to go into the non-graphite pencils. And that's our charcoal, our carbon, our graphite uh, carbon pencils and our color pencils, which some kind of wax type of setup. I imagine, I don't know what the formulation is for um, the color pencils. But let's just take a look now at the general pencil Kimberly 9XXB, which I use a lot. And uh, this one is part graphite and part carbon. So first off, I'm going to draw holding it in the back end again. Okay, so that's just drawing lightly by holding it in the back end. And now to give it a little more pressure, hopefully not to break the tip. All right, that's the 9XXB. Now let's take a look at that close up. Now you can see that it goes on dark. And like most dark or soft, um, dark or very soft pencils, um, it will have a tendency of letting you see the paper in the background. You can see the little you know, specks of white, which is why I use hard pencils initially to kind of fill those in before I go to soft but we're only going to deal with soft pencils or dark pencils here and then there's the real dark dark which you can see is darker than everything else that I've done on this page so far so so far it's the darkest and when you see that I'm tipping this and you can see that the graphite pencils the ebony and 9b got that glare notice the 9xxb does not and that is preferable because when you look at your drawing from an angle it will still look just as good as looking at it straight on okay so that's the advantage of the 9xxb and again also the Stadler uh, Mars Lumograph 100 pencils from I believe it's 7b on up and on up I think it ends at 9b I'm not I'm not too sure. It could be 10B, but I don't have the information right here in front of me. Okay, so that's all the pencils that contain graphite. These are 100% graphite with, um, you know, clay. And this would, of course, have graphite and carbon. Um, and it's the carbon that is keeping it, uh, making it nice and dark and getting rid of a lot of the glare. Here is a drawing pencil. This here is the Prismacolor the call erase so it means it's an erasable color pencil and uh, I was hoping to get something that will erase somewhat like a uh, a regular graphite pencil but yet achieve dark darks I just received this yesterday and so I'm gonna let you take a look at uh, how it works here and what we're able to achieve with it holding it in the back again this is the light application and yes, when I did this yesterday, I was very surprised that it actually applied on the paper very lightly, like it was just a regular graphite pencil. I mean, that's not that's not really black. I don't look. Bl I mean, it's a black color, but it's it's very light. It's not not dark. But now I'm going to press with this. 
which is pretty much going to make it hard to erase. But here we go. Okay, and that's pressed down. And as you can see, it's not as dark as these other pencils are. It is black, but it's kind of a washed out black look. And let me give it, give it to you really close here. I'll give you a good, good close look at that. And then you can compare it to these other ones. See that? Now how about glare? Does it have pencil glare? Well... What do you think? Look at the graphite. All shiny in your eyes. Not as much with the color pencil. There is a little, but not much. If you can see that, it's, it's more subdued. And of course, a lot of it too is the surrounding white here. But it is a little bit. It does have a little bit, but it doesn't seem to suffer like the graphite does. Graphite's terrible. It's just a lot of shine. And that's not so much at all. So that's one advantage of using this color pencil. However, uh, I have to say that you're not going to achieve the, the real dark dark. So you might use this for something that is more subdued dark, which is closer to a mid-tone than, than black. So in that case... Uh, that's what you would be using this uh, color race for, anyway. And they run, they run about a buck a piece too, so they're they're not inexpensive. Um, if you find them, I found them on eBay. Okay, now another pencil that is similar to a color pencil, and I'm not quite sure what category this pencil falls in. It's not charcoal. It's not carbon. It's not graphite. Um, it just seems like another kind of colored pencil but it doesn't it didn't come with that name color pencil but it's very unique and now I'm going to go ahead and and demonstrate that first off let me just make sure that this is PC color race written here so we don't forget all right and now I'm going to go down here so we can keep this all in the camera and this is the uh, Coronor Coenor Hartmuth Gioconda Negro pencil I'm not I, I can't describe what material it's probably some kind of color picks uh, pencil mixture type of deal and according to California uh, could be risky to your health who knows and I'm holding it in the back so I'm not giving it much pressure You see it it does apply quite nicely um, as far as being a dark pencil so that's good now we're going to go ahead and, and press down on it If you get the point nice and sharp, you can you can get it. I turn the pencil around, and I'm able to get a dark edge, and that means I'm digging into the paper even more so. But it doesn't doesn't the the sharpness dulls awfully fast as far as um, having to turn it. I just have to keep turning it so I can get the darkest application. But that's the best I'm going to do with this uh, Geoconda. See how you spell that conda. There you go. We'll take a close look at that. And so you can see here that it has a very, very mild glare. Nothing compared to, of course, graphite, as you can see. Just very mild, just like this other colored pencil, but just slightly, a slight reflection. And it's much, much darker, as you can see, 
than that color pencil or the color erase. In a little bit, we will we will note whether it uh, erases or not. But it's a it's a pretty good dark pencil. Unfortunately, here I had to press hard, which again is not desirable. But without pressing hard, it is darker than, of course, the graphite pencils or the color pencil. Uh, when you apply it lightly, it is darker. So it is the darkest of those of of these uh, pencils shown here, other than the 9XXB, which, however, you know, you can see more of the white of the paper in here, which is different because you don't hear. So you, this does seem to fill it better, fill the um, fibers of the paper better. Okay, moving on, uh, we're going to take a look now at a pure carbon pencil. This is called the General's Carbon Sketch, number 595. Very indispensable in my arsenal of pencil tools because it just goes on really dark. And let's go ahead and, and apply it. I'm holding it in the back again. But take a look at that. And it's extremely soft, so it's going to leave powder all over the place that you're going to have to blow off. And you're going to need to turn your pencil often. I mean often because it just plain comes off Whew. it's like charcoal pretty much in the same class but they do they do have different characteristics uh, hopefully we'll be able to see what they are after I'm finished here but there's adding the carbon on lightly and now I'm just going to press it in hopefully I don't break the tip because it's really soft and I'll tell you, you can use this pencil up really fast by pressing hard. Not recommended to use carbon for big areas because you go through this whole pencil in five minutes by trying to cover a whole background in carbon. And I'll write carbon here, C-A-R-B-O-N. And now let's take a look at that close up. And you can see that that is just plain black and zero glare. There's no glare, people. Indispensable for drawing photorealism, hyperrealism type drawings. This particular carbon pencil uh, in the dark areas of my girl in the wall drawing that I showed early was very helpful. Also in the gloves that I had drawn, some of it was carbon, some of it was the 9XXB and helped to make those gloves look realistic. So there you go. Applied soft and applied with pressure. It's pretty hard to tell the difference. It's just plain dark. Okay, last but definitely not least is just a soft charcoal pencil. We'll go ahead and start doing this lightly. And you can see that it too goes on very dark. And I have to be careful not to snap the long tip that I have on here. And now I'm going to add pressure to it. That's charcoal. All right, let's take a look at that. Match it to the carbon. The carbon definitely came out a lot darker than the charcoal. And the charcoal shows a lot more of the paper, but it is very, very dark and it has no glare. That's the thing with, with the charcoal. Or in this case, I see there's a little bit right there when I press down, which you're not supposed to. If you can see just barely a little glare right there, which is uncharacteristic for charcoal, which normally does not provide that kind of shine. But I did press pretty hard into that paper, and so I flattened it out. It's just not how you want to apply it. 
The carbon, even when I press the paper out, no shine, no shine. All right, so there you go. That's, that's a quick look at these uh, very dark drawing pencils. You can see that they all provide you with a certain level of uh, darkness, which will allow you to create uh, very high contrast type uh, drawings, which will pop, will just come up to come to life. You, you'll need these darker pencils, and especially the charcoal carbon, the 9XXB type pencils, which are exceptional due to the fact that they don't have the uh, glare to them. And also the Geoconda is good in the non-graphite or non-charcoal carbon area, but in the kind of, I don't know, we call it a, draw, um, a color pencil, I guess. I don't know. But um, for a colored pencil, uh, I, it, it is exceptional then, you know, excuse me, exceptional than, you know, using this one here, which I felt was a little on the lighter side. So anyway, uh, you just have to experiment with these and uh, learn when you want to use carbon, when you want to use charcoal. There's always that debate. Should I use carbon? Should I use charcoal? Well, it all depends. And it basically depends on what you're used to and whether you think it's going to give you the effect you're looking for. I can never tell somebody whether they should use carbon or charcoal because even I don't know the answer to that half the time. I kind of just experiment and then I see, okay, I can get away with a 9XXB or I, can, or I should use a, a carbon or a charcoal. All right, well now what we got to do is we're going to have to like look at how they differ in terms of uh, erasability. And so for that, let's start with the kneaded eraser, which is the normal way that, I shouldn't say normal, that's kind of, that's kind of wrong. But it is the common way of lightening areas on a drawing, a pencil drawing, um, when, you've, when you want to pull uh, some medium off the page. And usually you'll do something like give it a nice little tip, you know, form tip here. And then you'd, for example, I would come over here to this ebony pencil. And let me go ahead and see if I can zoom in as close as possible. For this next test here so you can see it all okay so what I want to do is I just want to take off a little bit of graphite and so I'm going to do that like that and kind of lighten it up a little bit and you can see that it lightens pretty good just by tapping on it so this really comes off good um, so I consider that exceptional as far as raceability because I'm just tapping. You're not going to get white white by just tapping you, using a very dark pencil. That You're going to have some ghosting and that's to be expected. So you can see that. Now when you press hard on the paper that changes everything. So let me get a new uh, clean tip here because it does dirty up quickly. And so now I'm going to go ahead and do it on the press down part. And there you go. And I consider that exceptional. That is exceptional. Okay. And that I was able to pull that much off, although that was drawn in really hard. Normally if you draw in really hard, you're not going to get it off. And the ebony comes off nice, so I definitely have to give it high marks for that. From a artist standpoint, I should say. Okay. And as far as just plain erasability, I'm going to use a standard pencil eraser here. And I'm going to take off graphite right off the middle and I'll take it off here so you can compare and I'm going to try to avoid taking off paper 
I just want to erase the graphite. Okay, let me get a brush here so you don't have to hear me blowing on that paper all day. There we go. And by the way, you want to get one of these nice little horsehair type brushes if you're drawing. All right. So you can see that it erases pretty good. There's a little more ghosting on the dark one, but that's because I pressed it in so hard. So that is really, really good. The ebony erases really good. And so it is definitely a good pencil to use when you want to get um, darker than the 9B that's the Prismacolor 9B. The ebony is definitely darker, and yet it erases really, really well. So I would find this to be much more exceptional than using that but anyway we're going to go ahead and take a look at the 9b and first I'm going to go ahead and get a new tip on my kneaded eraser here and then we'll start taking off the the corner here okay that came off really well now get a new corner on my kneaded eraser here, form a new tip, and we'll do the hard press side here. Okay, and it too comes off really well. And then I'm just going to erase down the middle. And there you go. So it races just fine. Next, we're going to look at the 9XXB, which has some carbon in it as well as graphite. So I don't anticipate it's going to lift off as easy as the pure graphite pencils, but let's see how much we can get. Here's a new point on this kneaded eraser here. Not too shabby. Leaves a little ghosting. That's to be expected when you're going so dark. But I'm pleased to see that I was able to pick up that much with a kneaded eraser and yet it has carbon in it. So that's pretty good. And then go ahead and the press down part here. Get a new tip here. Okay, so I can lighten it a little bit, but it's going to leave a lot behind, and that's to be expected. Now this eraser has got kind of a fat tip on it now, and I don't have much room to, to go down the middle without it taking almost all of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the eraser found at the back end of the cull erase. That way it gives me an ability to do a thinner erase line. I want to leave as much material on the, each side of the erase as possible so that you can you can compare. Okay, so there's the erase, and as you can see, it doesn't erase as much as graphite. It does leave a lot more ghosting, but I found it was quite impressive that I was able to take as much as I I was able to here as long as I didn't press hard. Pressing hard, of course, left a whole lot of material still behind. So you really need to know whether you're going to be wanting to erase. You want to be very careful that you don't uh, press too hard in areas that you might want to try lightening up later. So there's the 9XXB. Now next is the Cull Erase, the colored pencil. There's no graphite. This is a purely colored pencil. But it is an erasable type. But how does an erase with a kneaded eraser? Well, let's check that out. Now, 
not too bad leaves a little ghosting there we'll go back over here and we can see there's ghosting here uh, not as much here but there's a little and then this color pencil is pretty comparable to graphite which is not too shabby although that's about as far as I'm going to be able to lift off the graphite using the kneaded eraser and just dabbing it. Now I'm going to go ahead into this darker area here. See what we can lift off with the kneaded eraser. Okay, so we are able to get a little off. Didn't expect much, and I'm actually surprised I got this much off, but that's about the best I'm going to be able to get off using that method. And now the eraser itself, which this is actually on the pencil that I drew that with, so I'm using their eraser. And as you can see, in both cases, they erase really, really good. So it erases really good. So this is definitely a plus with this particular color pencil. It does erase. And it does lighten up a little bit here um, and here, though it does leave a lot of ghosting behind, which I expect ghosting for all dark colored pencils. Now the Geoconda. And this one here, I'm very curious about because I've never tried lifting it off of paper before. Usually if I use this pencil, I have no intentions of lifting it off. So let's try the kneaded eraser. Always want to get a clean spot on this kneaded eraser because it does dirty quickly. I've used this one for a long time. You can see how dirty it is, but they work a long time. All right, so it's not too bad. Kind of surprised it took anything off since I don't know what material this thing is. But anyway, let's go for the dark part of it. Some of it's coming off, that's good. Okay, and that's about it. The, as much as I'm going to get off, which isn't very much, but it does lighten it somewhat. Now let's go ahead and run the eraser through it. See what it will do. Okay, well that erases. That's good news. And so does that. Alright. So it does erase. You can see that the hard pressed one is going to leave a lot more material behind. Here it came off nice and clean and you can compare that to here. This came off way cleaner but it wasn't even anywhere near as dark as that. So that's pretty good. Now let's take a look at carbon. You probably already noticed carbon smears too. You see how that's smearing? Uh, that's another problem with carbon you have to be careful of is that it's easy to smear it on your paper you get fingerprints and all kinds of things well let's see if we can lift it off with a kneaded eraser you can get some of it off Lightens a little bit.
But I can tell you that if you intend to get down to the whites, it's going to be a lot more than just dabbing with a kneaded eraser because it leaves a whole lot behind. All right, well, that's about the best I can get with the kneaded eraser. And we'll go with the dark, darkest mashed up side there. See what we can do with that. I can't even hear the stickiness of the kneaded eraser on that. And it dirties up the kneaded eraser a lot faster than graphite does. There we go. A little sticky noise there. Got to have that. Tells me it's still working. Okay. Well, there you go. That's about the best I can dab it off. You can see it's a big difference there because it, it is a definitely much darker uh, pencil. Now for this, the eraser. See what we can do with the eraser. As you can see, it's going to leave a whole lot behind. So if you're going to draw with carbon, you definitely want to make sure that you're not intending on taking it off again, that you want it to you know, be unerased. In other words, you, you want to put it on black and leave it black. So you got to be really careful with your application of it. And also you got to be careful because it will smear. And you're going to find charcoal to be similar. Go ahead and get the kneaded eraser ready here and let's see what we can take off with the kneaded eraser on charcoal. Not getting much. That's about it for the neat eraser on that charcoal block. I'm going to do it on the other one, which of course I expect even less results because it was pressed on. Okay, that's about the best I can do with charcoal. You can see it's just as bad as the carbon. Very little comes off. You can lighten it, but you're not going to get it off. And then with the eraser, we have basically the same situation here. Leaves a lot behind. Next, and the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the blending situation for each of these and for that I'm going to go grab myself a cotton swab like this one here and let's take a look at what each one of them will do blending wise so I'm going to go back here to the ebony which is graphite and let's blend Okay, let's blend this one. Okay. So that's how that blends. Now let's go to the 9B. Give me a clean spot on my Q-tip here. There 
and the dark side here. I'm deliberately going outside the lines so that you can see how it blurs out or blends out I should say maybe blends and blurs out if you like all right so that's that okay get a clean side here we're gonna go with the 9xxb dark side that's the title of this video the dark side of pencils so what we're doing now the PC the Prismacolor Call erase, and let me go ahead and get another Q-tip here. Okay, let's see if we can blend this. dark side all right the geoconda And the dark side. Next, carbon. It's much more abrasive feeling when you're blending carbon. It's not as smooth of a blend it almost has the feeling that I'm digging into the paper and I might be actually it's very very rough so I wouldn't be doing a whole lot of blending with carbon I want to go for black black and not be lightening it up like this and it really felt like it was digging in once it started to get into the q-tip and then start digging into the paper it just feels very rough Okay, and the darker side. The sensation is, is like I'm taking paper off. I don't I may not be, but it just feels very rough on the paper. 
and I just don't do blending on carbon. It's just, and if I do anything, it might be just to feather the edges if it's like up against something. But for the most part, nope. That just, that's just kind of hard to work with there in the blending. But there you go. Now charcoal. Charcoal is often a blended medium. And it is, the sensation is close to the carbon. But yes, if you have soft charcoal, that is, that is something you blend a lot with. And I'm not saying you don't blend with carbon. I'm just saying I don't do a lot of that because it just felt a little rough, you know. But anyway, and this this isn't exactly the smoothest either, but I've worked with charcoal and I've never really had a problem in blending it. So could be the paper, could be the Q-tip, who knows. But anyway, we're just going to blend the material and see how it looks. Now I'm doing the dark side of the charcoal. So I'm not getting any major results out of that. That's different. Looks the same on both sides. All right. Zoom out. And there you go. You can compare each one right there. In the blending, this definitely came out the darkest with the carbon. And this came out second. And you got the 9X, it could be, and then everything starts to fall in this particular order. So I'll let you just take a look at that. You can decide for yourself which is which, what is what. But just remember, you know, that you're dealing with different kind of mediums here. Graphite's really good for light to mid-tones. And then you want to use a 9XXB or the carbon or the charcoal. Maybe even the Geoconda uh, when you want to get to the really dark, dark areas to make the drawing pop. You give it that nice nice contrast that gives you that photorealism in your drawings all right well i hope you like this little review on the darkest side the dark side of pencils thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't done so already and i really love comments so just tell me what you think or ask questions or or just whatever you want to talk about I read them all. I really do. Even though now we're hitting 10,000 subscribers. Um, I'm still reading all the comments and I'm responding to those that look like uh, that a response is needed. And I'll see you in the next video.